Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. Today, I talked to Nicole Baker, podcaster, speaker, and life coach, helping high achievers beat perfectionism, cut the hustle, and achieve goals with fun and ease. We had such a fun conversation about types of perfectionists and even compared it to the three types in my personality quiz. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marta Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, hi, Marta. This is a delight to be here today. Thank you. I know. We were like fired up. We, we just talked on, we were already talking. I was like, let's just freaking hit record because we don't want to miss out on the amazing conversation that we're about to have. Uh, and I didn't even like t- tell you what the structure of the show is, but that's okay. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I like it. We're winging it. This is good. We're winging it. <laughs> As doers, since I just discovered that, uh, oh, yeah. that's how we operate. If you are a feeler, you would be annoyed at me for not preparing you. But since I know that that's not you, you'll be not at all. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I honestly, I don't, I don't know if you resonate with this. Also, if I over prepare on an over prepare for me is a very low bar. I feel like mm-hmm. sometimes I almost get like out of the present moment. I'm always thinking mm-hmm. about, okay, I know this is coming up or this is coming up. Right. And just being able to like jump in, dive in with both feet. I'm able to be so much more present, especially in interviews. I don't know if you ever yeah. like that. No, I am. I don't, I like just improvising or seeing what comes about. I think that that's more exciting to me yeah. than the structure or rigidness. So I'm so excited about this, but before I get to uh, you introducing yourself and and talking more about who you are, um, I always like to start the episodes uh, encouraging people to not only take written notes, take mental notes, but go on and share with us and tag us on social media because I'll share your info afterwards about their ahas. Because as we start talking, people are going to get uh, insights, right? They're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is a different way of looking at the situation or this is a resource I need to go and check out. Or you said this one sentence that really encouraged and motivated me today based on what I was going through. So I would love to hear that because as a podcaster, uh, it can be kind of lonely because you're just talking into this microphone. Obviously when there's <laughs> guests, it's, it's more fun. It's more actual totally. <laughs> like me. It's fun to have the interaction, but still it's nice to know what's resonating. So mm-hmm. we can talk more about that or we can, you know, bring other guests that can expand on the same topic. Mm-hmm. So I would love for you um, ladies and guys listening uh, to take a screenshot of the episode, tag me on Instagram, Marta Spurk, or tag me on Facebook or whatever platform you use and share the show, share the show with other people that you feel may benefit from it. But without further ado, welcome again, Nicole. Tell us who you are and what you do and we'll dive right in. Oh, I love it. Um, well, and I want to touch on something real quick because I saw this statistic not too long ago. When you physically write something down, you are 60% more likely to remember it a week later. Mm. When you write it down and you revisit your notes, a year later, you're 95% more likely to remember. And I don't think it just goes for handwritten notes in a journal, although yes, those are definitely gold. Mm -hmm. Writing something on social media, posting it like you're saying and tagging people, just physically putting yourself back into that, really ingraining that language, that um, aha moment or that lesson that you learned into your body makes you more likely to follow through on it because we often, we so often, and I don't know if you're the same way, like we'll attend a seminar, we'll listen to a podcast, we'll listen to an audiobook, and we'll hear this like golden nugget. We're like, oh my God, that was so good. And then two hours later, we're like, oh crap, what was that? I don't remember. Like we don't ever act on it. And um, I can't remember who says it, but they don't say, they say knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. And it's the same way here. If you physically write it down, either in a text in a Mm -hmm. story or on a piece of paper, you're much more likely to follow through. I'm stepping off my neuro-linguistic programming. Hi, horse for a second. Hi, I'm Nicole. (laughs) Um, uh, The question was, who am I? What do I do? I am a coach for perfectionists. I work with primarily 
two different types of people that high achiever that I have to do, do, do hamster wheel. You and I were talking about this before we clicked record this, like, I need to constantly chase achievement after achievement, after achievement, thinking the next one will make me happy. The next one will make me happy. And it never does for longer than like six minutes. And then we're on to the next one already feeling behind or feeling like we're not enough. So I work with that primarily kind of person, but I also work with more that procrastinator perfectionist, Mm -hmm. the person who feels like they need to have every single step figured out in order to press go. Um, And it really keeps them from living into their power, really keeps them from actually going after the things they want. And they they always feel like they're kind of on the cusp of their um, living into their true nature. Excuse me. So those are the primarily the two people I work with, but um, I was really lucky because I grew up in this world. I have two parents who were very immersed in the personal development world of the eighties, nineties, and early two thousands. And so I got to grow up going to seminars and doing Mm. the fire walks and climbing the poles and learning this language really. But while I loved it and while it was so much a part of me, I got to middle school and like early or excuse me, late elementary school. And I started getting severely bullied to the point where it almost like it beat that information out of me. And I was just like the shell of a human being. And it created this intense perfectionism in me. Like if I don't show up as the person that everyone needs me to be, then this will continue happening. I'll continue getting hurt physically or mentally. And that stuck with me for so long until finally I was in a college program and my professor sat me down and was basically like, because of your confidence, you either need to perform a miracle or you're going to have to leave. Like it was that dire. Mm. And I'd worked my little took us off to get into the school. And it was my dream to be on Broadway. It was a musical theater program, one of the best in the world. And I finally looked at him and I was like, watch me try, at least watch me try. And so I called up my dad, who's a life coach. And I was like, yo, I got it. I got to start implementing this stuff now. Talk about knowledge versus impl- or, uh, yeah. implemented knowledge. And I was like, I've known this stuff forever, but I need to implement this or else my dream is on the line. And God bless him. He, he coached me relentlessly. Like every day, it was amazing the work he did with me. And not only did I graduate, but it completely transformed my life. It completely transformed how I showed up as a human. And I just knew from that moment, it was like, I am put on this earth to do this for other people too. Mm -hmm. And so after graduating, I was a performer for a little bit. And then I finally did the huge switcheroo. And I was like, nope, the time is now. The walrus said, like, let's go for it. And um, here I am several years later building a business. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love this story so much. And I feel it's so interesting because, you know, we connect and we know a little bits and pieces about um, the other person's story. Mm -hmm. But then when we get to the show and it's an ongoing thing, obviously, but, and I, we get to hear the details and the nitty gritty. It's so fun how all of us have little things in common Mm -hmm. or things that we experience that is not exactly the same, but we have thought similar things. And I love um, that you've said, you know, you're blessed to have this upbringing and to be, to have a place where you could go back to and say, Hey, now I know that I need this help. Cause I think for me, uh, similarly, I grew up not in the personal development world, but I grew up in church Mm -hmm. and I heard so much about, what is very similar in the personal development world about, you know, your thoughts matter, the things that you say matter, your beliefs matter. Um, And for a while through my adult life, especially after getting married, I kind of blew all of that off. And it was like, let me just live my life. And then I got pregnant with triplets. And I was like, I feel like I need to go back to that to survive this. (laughs) (laughs) And that's where I really started my business then was wow. out of that need to revisit those, those things and to really nurture myself and then realizing I could share those steps with other people. So we definitely have, have that in common and so much more, but tell me more about this musical theater that totally caught my attention. Cause for me growing up in Brazil and being so like, there's heavy influence obviously of American culture mm-hmm. with uh, you know, music m- movies and we live this dream of, you know, the United States is kind of like a parallel universe. It's kind of like Disney. This is what the, (laughs) in case you didn't know, the outside world sees the United States as Hollywood and Disney. So that's like living the dream, the American dream, whatever it is. Right. And now living here, I'm like, no, this is how they live their lives. (laughs) You know, so (laughs) it's really interesting to, to anyways, but I've grown up 
around music and, and playing and singing because of church. Um, so I'm curious to know also how that background has played into you building a business and because nothing is ever wasted. So your experience, I'm sure with rejection and with, you know, repetition and I don't know, I'll just let you talk. <laughs> I mean, you nailed it on the head. I think that the first thing that comes to mind with growing up, I did musical theater for about 10 to 12 years. I can't remember the exact number, but you get the thickest skin being in performance world, whether you're playing the trombone or you're singing or you're opera singing or whatever it is. But um, I'd say the biggest thing that has come from my experience with performing is being able to, to turn it on, not in a fake way, but in a I'm just going to be present. I'm going to turn on an entirely different part of myself that was on than maybe a second before. Like I've had coaching calls, like especially way back when I first started, when I'd be so nervous to like hop on a discovery call and be like, oh my God, like blah, blah, blah. But the second the call started, it was like, I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone immediately. And I think a lot of that does come from the performance world and not, again, not from performing as like a different person. I'm very, very raw and real on my, on my podcast and on my calls, but it's more about being able to step into an energy that maybe was entirely different than an energy before. So that's really the first thing that comes to mind. The second is exactly what you said, rejection, rejection, rejection. You get so used to not hearing anything, let alone the word. No, you're lucky if you hear the word, no, <laughs> like, oh, wow. but you, you normally just don't hear anything at all. And then getting so totally cheesy for a second. I met my fiance at college and I'd say, mm -hmm he is hands down the best thing that came out of my performance life, like period. Mm -hmm. And, um, he's, he's wonderful. So while that's not necessarily business directly related, I would not be able to build this business without his love and support, mm -hmm. constant, constant support. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. There's always lessons. And I feel like the older I get, and I, I I'm sure this is true for other people too. We start looking back and we're like, Oh, I've been through this before. Oh, yeah. this is not so unknown. Although I've never been in this exact position, I have tools and I have the experience yeah. and I'm sure that this is what you uh, use with your clients too. So let's talk more specifically. You said you, you, you focus on women that tend to procrastinate, especially because of that perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about how that manifests. Cause that's, when, that was one of the things that I started talking about when we first hopped on zoom and I was like, wait, 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 <laughs> let's start recording. Cause, um, I was for me, before, uh, especially last year when I started diving into more like the subconscious mind and what is actually running the show here and diving into myself past the surface, um, before all of this, I would look at perfectionism as like analytical people that want to mm -hmm. write, you know, a list of pros and cons and are afraid of taking risks because they want to make sure they know what the outcome is going to be like. Yeah. And I've really, never really been like that. And I think it must have, must kind of be like the performer in me. I have no problem getting in front of people and just doing the thing. And it's like grabbing the bull by its horns. I don't care what's going to happen. I would rather take a chance and just sit and wonder what it would look like. That yeah. That's how I operate. So I never really resonated with the definition of perfectionism. But then um, last year going through a coaching program and, and understanding more about like imposter syndrome oh, and yeah. the ramifications of that and uh, or even comparison with other people. Or, you know, thinking that others are better than me or thinking I'm better than them. I'm more qualified than them. But here they are doing all these amazing things and having fans and people that swear by their stuff. I started noticing that there are different nuances to perfectionism. Mm. So I'd love for you to expand on that. Oh, well, I not too long ago when I was really diving into working with perfectionists, I started noticing patterns mm. and me being the analytical doer that I am, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just start writing these patterns down. Like, cause every single person, while their, their personal journey is going to look very different. There's a lot of similarities to them. Right. And so I started writing these down and I realized there were really three different types of this perfectionist tendency that tended to show up. And that is this overachiever, mm -hmm. this person, like the hamster wheel we talked about earlier, constantly looking to achieve, achieve, achieve. But it's because the perfect version of themselves is that busybody, is that I'm an achiever. They hold a very strong identity of I'm someone who works hard. I'm determined. I'm busy. I'm an achiever, really. And so this normally will, will result in them 
never truly feeling like they're enough when they're slowing down Mm -hmm. or that they're enough without achievement or finding their self-worth honestly without achievement. I just did a big podcast episode on that recently and it was really well received. And I think it was for a reason. Um, so that's one type. The second type is that procrastinator that I need to know every single step. If I don't know every single step, Ooh, no, it's too much. It's too much, too overwhelming. Overwhelm tends to really be the name of the game here. They feel this power inside them, these procrastinators, but stepping into it feels so out of their comfort zone that that survival brain will kick in. It'll literally say, "Mm, no, you're getting out of your comfort zone. That literally means you're going to die. I'm just, I'm going to halt everything, go scroll on TikTok for a while. And procrastinators get a really bad rep because they hear it. Cause I have a quiz as well. It's um, the three different types of perfectionism. And when people get procrastinators, they tend to be like, oh man, procrastinators are lazy. They don't do anything. And to be honest, I've I've noticed the entire opposite. Procrastinators are dreamers. They have big, bad looking goals. They're gorgeous goals. It's the overwhelm is the only thing that's getting in their way. And everyone has their favorite flavor of overwhelm. Then last but not least, there's the people pleaser. There's the person who tends to look externally. Everyone needs to see me as perfect. Apologies. Everyone needs to see me as perfect or else I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. So they're the people who will put everyone else in front of them because that's what a person should do. And I've seen this in men, definitely, but it's primarily in women, especially women who tend to be mothers or sisters who are like the caretakers of the family. They hold a lot of their identity in being there for everyone else, but it's from a place of this is what a person should look like. That's just a different way of saying this is how a perfect person should look Mm -hmm. like. So that's really the three different types that I recognized. And I started diving into information on these people because I was like, this is just fascinating because again, while everyone's journey is going to look different out of this type of perfectionism, the steps to get out of them are going to be very similar based off of which type you are. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And I love that. Obviously I love quizzes and I'm glad you brought this up because then we can talk about your, your results for, for my personality quiz. Yes. And, uh, but I love that it's exactly what I was thinking. I didn't even know you had a quiz <laughs> and I will have to post the link and I'll have to take it. Although I am pretty sure what I'm going to square. Or I was going to say, I'm, as, I'll be shocked if you're not the one that you and I are both thinking you right. are. Because so. <laughs> we were just talking about this, um, being this impulsive and it's like, no, I, I'm not caught up in the details, but there are different nuances of perfectionism. Mm-hmm. And it just makes so much sense that what being a perfectionist really means is you have this ideal of what you should be like. And this is how you're living your life instead of really living in the moment and accepting that you are your best version right now. So let's look at what is instead of not looking in the future. This actually reminds me of a book. I don't know if you've um, heard of it or read it. It's called Queen Code. I haven't, but I'm curious. It's really interesting. It's... um, it's, it's fiction, but it has like a message behind it. It, it. It's really focused on the relationship, like romantic relationship between men and women. Mm-hmm. But then it talks about really the conflict that happens when we, you know, uh, antagonize men to saying they're sloppy, they're, you know, they're, they misbehave, they don't do what I ask, they don't listen to me, blah, blah, blah. Totally. It focuses on look at your own behavior and your expectations And I love how she framed, she said exactly what you just described as we're comparing men to the ideal of what a woman should look like. So it never really measures up because women live more for women than they do for men. That was so eye opening to me in seeing how you're trying to compare apples to oranges and it's never going to work. An apple is never going to turn into an orange, (laughs) you know? So, and then when you think about yourself, holding yourself to that standard, which is an impossible standard. Mm-hmm. And that's why we do that because then we can beat ourselves up over it. So sick, ding, ding. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's insane. So I love that. And I, and I would love for you to, um, give me the link for people to take the quiz and absolutely I take it as well. Absolutely. I would love for you to take it and let me know what you get. Cause I'm going to be very curious for sure. Yes. And, and I want to, I want to touch on the, the men is, and men is perfectionism thing real quick, because a lot of times we hear perfectionism and we equate it to women. We mm. see it a lot on women's social media. Um, yes. it's really projected to us, especially right now. We're in this beautiful, beautiful time where 
it messy, imperfect is really starting to be highlighted. Yes. And this, like, I, I've struggled with perfectionism. Um, I'm really trying to get out of it is, is starting to be talked about a lot more. And I'm so grateful for it. It's such an important message, but men struggle with it so much as well. And actually right now, 50% of my clients are men nice. because they, they do struggle with this so much. And you know, it's, and I think a lot of it is like society's version and I'm not going to blame perfectionism entirely on society, but I'm not going to say it's not a very large part of it. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of it is like the, the perfect man is supposed to look like that. He never cries. He's very masculine. Mm-hmm. He hits the gym, you know? Um, and it's, it just creates such a toxic relationship, just like it does with women, how we're yeah. supposed to be quote unquote, supposed to be skinny or beautiful or, um, have this, our whole lives together, be able to be there for everyone. Like there's just so much of the societal pressure that you have to look a certain way. And if you don't match up, then don't flaunt your mistakes. Don't flaunt your imperfections there. And I am just so against that. I have a segment on my show every single week. That's how are you imperfect this week? I want to know your imperfections. I want to know and celebrate the fact that we're not so dang perfect all the yes. time. I think that's so overrated. And luckily we're coming out of this era mm-hmm. and I'm just like rubbing my hands together. Like, Oh, I'm so excited for the next few years. Like I'm yeah. so excited. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And especially with understanding that the same thing happens with men and how powerful it is to become aware of this and to improve our relationships and understand, you know, if, if we understand that all of us are walking around with this ideal of perfection in our heads Uh, that's why we act the way that we do, right? And to help us see people differently and not take things so personally um, and understand that we're all kind of struggling to fit the mold that we created in our heads that was largely impacted by society and our environment, obviously. But it's still, it's that unique version that nobody knows because it's in our heads. And oftentimes we don't even know it's in there. And we're just, you know, living blindly. Um, I would love for you to share because you, you described the three types. What are some specific steps or tips that you can give for each of them to get to them, to, to reflect, start unpacking this and maybe start making some changes? Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to go category by category again. The overachiever, that high achiever type, hamster wheel of achievement, so on and so forth. The key to them really looking at perfectionism in the face is slowing down. Mm -hmm. And I've literally had high achievers hang up the phone on me when I say this because it's so inconceivable to them. Mm -hmm. It's so uncomfortable. There's so much of their identity tied into this go, 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 do, do, do. But I want to elaborate because slowing down, I don't mean laying on the couch and watching Netflix and eating popcorn for 16 hours. That's a high achievers like that, like makes them break out in hives, right? (laughs) So instead of looking at it like that, it's something that will bring you into the present. Mm. That is truly all I mean when I say slow down. So for me, I'm, I am the high achiever 10 out of 10. That is my perfectionist type. Oh God. It's like actually ridiculous. But what I do is every single day I have a meditation ritual. I have a visualization ritual when I'm working out, I'm slowing down. I do not look at my phone before I start my day. I have a paint by numbers kit that I love dearly, (laughs) like, Mm. but it's all these things that slow me down in a way that get me present. Mm -hmm. That is really the big kicker here. It's not slowing down so you can lay on the couch and feel like you're a lazy sack of hootie wah. You know, it's not for that. It's so that you can really get present, connect to your breath, connect to the life that you're living right now. I always say, enjoy the life you're working so hard for. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about for the, for the overachievers procrastinators. It's about diminishing that overwhelm. And rather than just saying like, don't get overwhelmed. Cause that's just putting a blanket on a freaking house fire. Like that doesn't do anything. Right. So instead of looking at it like that, saying really and truly, how can I chunk this down? In personal development, we talk all the time about chunking things down, chunking things down, chunking things down. And I like to look at it like this. If you're standing in a field and in front of you are 40 cats and they're on some like hyperactive, crazy catnip, they're hulking out like crazy. And your one job is to herd all 40 cats. You can't go into the field, spread your arms and scoop them all up at the same time. You're going to get scratched. You're probably going to get peed on. Like it's not going to go very well for you, right? 
So instead of looking at all 40 cats and you need to get them all at once, it's looking at one cat, zeroing your eyes on one cat, going and getting it, loving it, and putting it in a safe little place. That is all goal setting is, or tackling a to-do list, or tackling a business project, whatever it is, it is looking at it one step at a time. So for procrastinators, it's chunking things down into things you can do in one sitting. I always call them one sitting tasks, tasks you can do in 60 minutes or less. Start website is not a 60 minute, or excuse me, is not a one sitting task. Research three website platforms and sign up for the one you like the best. That is a one sitting task. Mm -hmm. It's all about making your brain, it's working with your brain so you can sit down and know exactly what you're doing in the next 30 minutes to an hour. Last but not least, with the people pleaser, it is truly all about learning to trust your own voice, Mm. learning to trust the space you take up. So often people pleasers put these other voices, other people in their lives on these high pedestals. I used to be someone, I used to be a major people pleaser. I would go up to a group of people, they would be talking about something and I would change my entire belief system to match them so I'd be accepted. And it's not because I like wanted to be loved and accepted. Of course, I was like the core of it, but it was really and truly in the moment because if I didn't, I was afraid of what would happen otherwise. And so that was, it was so, it was so twisted. So the, the name of the game for people pleasers is to just start the inner work. And that's so ambiguous. I'm so sorry. It's going to look different for everyone. You're listening to a podcast right now, literally the empowered woman podcast. You're off to a great start. <laughs> like you're doing yes. great. There you go. When you start to absorb information that gets you thinking, that gets you into your own brain, into your own subconscious mind mm-hmm. to really start thinking about who am I, who am I at my core? that is when you're going to start to see magic happen. That's when you're going to go up to a group, they're going to be talking about something and you can say, well, actually I think this Mm -hmm. and not like pee your pants of fear, you know? (laughs) And so I think that when it comes to people pleasers, getting a therapist, a coach, a mentor, Mm -hmm. um, if that's not in your budget right now, that's totally fine. Go to the library and rent a personal development book. It does not have to cost you a dime to start working on yourself. Mm -hmm. I will admit it goes a lot faster when you have someone calling you out on your, you you know, the name of the game, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to cost you anything. You can start it right here and now, and you're off to a great start. Listen yeah. to this don't use that as a, don't use that as an excuse. <laughs> nope. Never, start ever, ever. Yeah. No, this is so good. And to bring it back is as you were describing, uh, you know, the best steps to get, or the tips to getting out of that, that space and really acknowledging yourself and your mm-hmm. behaviors and your patterns. I was kind of creating parallels in my head with the three types that I have for my quiz. And they actually totally. really, really combine. And so before you even said that you were um, the overachiever, I had you take the test, the quiz mm-hmm. right before you, we hopped on and you scored as a doer, which oh, makes yeah. a lot of sense with doer being the achiever. So now I need to, to go and take your quiz and look closely at the descriptions of the other two, because I have the feeler and the thinker, but I think it really goes hand in hand with uh, the procrastinator and the people pleaser. That is awesome. I am. Well, I, I love it. And I'm even looking at my results right now. And one of the, your growth strategy, slowing down and listening. It's the same freaking thing. Same Go thing. figure. Go <laughs> like, figure, right? You know? Validating. Like we're, <laughs> we didn't just come up with this. It's a no, thing. <laughs> this is actually a thing in, in tried and true personal development, personal yeah. growth worlds. Like so often people think, I don't know if you notice this, Marta, like so often people think there's like the secret pill that the personal yeah. development oh, yeah. gurus are keeping hidden in like this little mm-hmm. locket. And it's not, mm-hmm. I, com, uh, what, what's, there's a great quote, complexity is the enemy of execution. Mm. Said differently, make it simple, you yeah. follow through. Like exactly. just plain and simple. And people think that it's so complicated. It's this big like, aha, the sky's part, the angel sing, start moment. It's not, it's two degree shifts. It's getting mm-hmm. 1% better every 100%. single day. And high achievers calling you out for a second, When we hear 1% better every day, we think, okay, I just got to push harder. I got to go harder. It's not like that. Mm. 1% better means being more in alignment with yourself. And sometimes that means slowing down, getting present, really listening to what your body needs in that moment. And I have never, ever, ever in my life met someone who is 
a super high achiever, always working 24 seven, go, 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 do, 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 who is truly fulfilled and happy. Mm. I've never met. And I, I grew up in this field. I know a lot of people like that. Like I've never met someone, the people who I see who are truly at their core, so incredibly happy are the people who live their mission. That means they, um, there's another quote. I'm just a quote Bible today. There's, uh, there's a great quote that says life is mastering the art of when to speed up and when to slow down. Mm. It is just that plain and simple. And we have mastered the speed up in this society. Oh yeah. It's time to master the slowdown. That is huge. Hopping off my high horse. Oh my gosh. (laughs) When I have to go look up and and see who said that quote, because that's so true. There's a time for both things, but it's about that balance and recognizing yeah. for whichever type you are, there is a time, right. To slow down. And there's a time to speed up and recognizing when that is, that is totally, really, I love it. Well, before we wrap up and have you tell us uh, how to find you in different ways that you can work with these perfectionists out there to, to get them um, improving, loving themselves more first, <laughs> and then making some changes. I, because we jumped right in, I didn't give you the warning, but, but since you are uh, a doer like me, it shouldn't intimidate you. I I have some rapid fire questions that I, that I ask, um, and it's based on my, on my framework. (laughs) You're getting sorry. Put my my hair up, put my glasses (laughs) on. Oh God, here we go. (laughs) Uh, So it's just five different phrases. Um, and whatever comes to mind, it could be a word, or if you want to expand on it, feel free. Um, it's just supposed to be spontaneous. Are you ready? Beautiful. Done. Okay. Let's go. All right. So first one is notice yourself. Being quiet. Mm. Mm. Listen to yourself. Equanimity. Ooh, I love it. Fancy. <laughs> uh, next one is forgive yourself. Do you know the exercise Ho'oponopono? Yes. Ho'oponopono is the first thing that comes to mind. For those who don't know, it's this Hawaiian forgiveness exercise. We talk about it a lot in neurolinguistic programming, which is primarily my background. And it's all about seeing this person or this version of yourself and saying to them, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Over and over and over and over again. And I even expand on it with my clients sometimes and have them free write or have them talk out loud. I'm sorry for, mm-hmm. please forgive me for, Ooh, thank you awful. for, I love you because, mm-hmm. and just going off of that. So that's definitely the first thing that comes to mind. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, next one is empower yourself. Ooh. Frequency, staying in a high frequency. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, transform yourself. Learning, always learning every day, 1% better. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. I love it so much. <laughs> this is such a fun conversation at a very high speed. <laughs> conversation, <laughs> like back and forth. I love it. This is like, it gives me life. It's, it's so fun. This is well, what happens when you put, I was going to say, this is what happens when you put two doers in a room or like, it is <laughs> like sparks fly. People are going to have to listen to this, this in half speed. I know. Instead of one and a half or two, which is what I normally do, I probably would would still. And then it's <laughs> like, well, it's writing down a note. Like, uh, I have no idea what that chicken word just was. Yes, like, yes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, tell us how to find you. Tell us uh, beside the quiz, what is other resources? Uh, what are other resources that you have, or different ways of working with people? Go right ahead. Totally. So you can find me at Life Coach Baker on all the things. I'm on Instagram primarily but you can also go to my website there. You'll find the quiz, the three different types of perfectionist quiz. You can also go to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash quiz, plain and simple, nice and easy. Um, I also have a podcast. It is called the life coach Baker podcast. I know shocking. Don't, don't get crazy guys. Um, and then primarily working with me, I have two different offers. I have my one-to-one coaching program. That is for people who are ready to get in the spirit to really go nitty gritty. On my website, you can book a free discovery call with me. We coach for 30 minutes. It's really all about you figuring out what your next steps are. And yeah, you'll learn about the program, but primarily my mission of those calls is for you to leave every single call with a next action step. Mm -hmm. So you can find that on my website. It's just at the top, book a free 30 minute discovery call. And then I also have a course called Goal Smasher, which is all about, especially if you're leaning into more that procrastinator type. Dear God, start there. It's all about breaking down the style of goal setting, the strategy of goal setting in a way that's overwhelm free, burnout free, making sure you're really to keep that lasting, consistent motivation. And you have this really clear structure that I create for you. So that's all also on my website, but 
yeah, primarily go say hi to me on Instagram. I would love that. Send me a DM. Tell me you listen to this and I will give you a virtual hug. (laughs) I love it. And I'll put all the links in the show notes. People go, go on and connect with Nicole. She's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. This was so fun. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Wasn't this such a fun conversation? Nicole is great. Make sure you check her out. All the links are in the show notes. I'm so happy to be connecting with amazing women through the podcast. If you've ever wanted to be on the show, remember the fastest way is to leave me a review on iTunes and also get my audiobook and share it on social media. Don't forget to tag me. Until next time. Bye.